Sedimentary rocks are those that form from weathered and eroded material, which is compacted into rocks. They can be grouped into three distinct types, clastic, biochemical and chemical. First, clastic sedimentary rocks, those formed mechanically. We need to understand weathering and erosion to understand how these form. Weathering is the in-situ breakdown of rocks at the Earth's surface by the action of rainwater, biological activity and changes in temperature, known as chemical, biological and mechanical actions respectively. This means none of the rock is transported away. It just stays where it is. It forms smaller and smaller fragments over time. Erosion is where the rock is being worn away and transported by wind, water, ice or gravity. This occurs on desert hoodoos, riverbeds, glacial moraine and the coast. These weathered particles form the clasts in clastic sedimentary rocks, which are classified by composition, cement, size, shape and sorting. These are the clasts and the composition can be determined by observation or chemical analysis. The cement keeps the rock together, but isn't always present. Sometimes there'll be a matrix of small grains. The cement's composition can be determined with the same analysis. The size, shape and sorting is determined by these charts. The size can be measured as fine, medium or coarse, in millimetres or in the phi scale. The shape and sorting are more qualitative, although there is a method to quantify the latter. A sieve for each grain size is used, often from minus 2 to 4 phi. This covers all grain sizes from 4 mm down to 0.0625 mm. The sieves are stacked with the coarsest grill on top. Then, 100 grams of sediment is poured in, the stack is shaken, and the results are weighed for each sieve. In this example, the top sieve contains all material with a diameter of 2 mm or greater. The second contains the grains between 2 mm and 1 mm, and so on, down to 0.125 mm. The weights will be a percentage of the total, as 100 grams of sediment was poured in. This means calculating the cumulative frequency is simple, as is drawing the graph. Then, the cumulative frequency graph is used to determine the phi values at 5, 16, 84 and 95 and the sorting coefficient is calculated with the inclusive graphic standard deviation formula. Then the table is used to translate this into qualitative descriptions, if they are required. Now we know how clastic sedimentary rocks are classified, we can look in more detail at some specific rocks. Breccia and conglomerate are made of mixed clasts with no specific grain size range, although they are poorly sorted. Breccia contains glass which are angular, they're not rounded. This suggests the glass were transported in a low energy environment, such as a glacier. A conglomerate has rounded glass, suggesting higher energy transport, for example a river. Both rocks can include many different rock types, including igneous, metamorphic and older sedimentary rocks. Sand is anything between minus 1 and 4 phi. Sandstone normally forms from quartz, often cemented by silica or hematite, although it can have a silt or clay matrix. Arcos is a type of sandstone, with a higher concentration of feldspar, normally potassium-rich feldspar. It's easy to identify from the large quantity of angular pink grains in it. Another sandstone, orthoquartzite, has a very high concentration of quartz. It is typically all quartz, sometimes with chert in it. It typically lacks a fine-grained matrix. Siltstone is a very fine-grained rock, composed of angular particles of silt, which are between 4 and 8 phi in diameter. Siltstone is between 6 and 7 on Mohs hardness scale, so erodes slowly. Finer than siltstone is shale, composed of clay-sized minerals around 8 to 10 phi, or 0.039 mm or less, shale is also a mudstone. It has a separate name because shale is laminated, meaning it easily splits along a fracture plane. Clays have the same grain size as shales, 
as they're made of the same thing. However, clays typically contain higher concentrations of clay than shales, which have impurities such as quartz and feldspars. The water in clays causes plasticity, meaning clay can be easily moulded. Some clastic sedimentary rocks are named after the location they formed. For example, wadi conglomerates are formed in wadi channels after a desert flash flood. They're often identifiable by their red clasts of desert sandstone. Desert sandstone is formed in a desert and is made of quartz grains like any other sandstone. However, the grains are very well sorted in a desert sandstone as the sand is all transported by the wind. Grains that are too small are carried off the continent. Grains that are too large are not picked up by the wind. This causes a grain size between 0 and minus 1 phi. Finally, glacial till is carried at the front of a glacier. As the glacier retreats, the till is left behind. This is poorly sorted, as ice can carry anything, and the clasts are likely to be angular. Next, biochemical sedimentary rocks. These rocks are created when organisms, plants or animals, use chemicals in their surroundings to build tissue. This includes plants using CO2 to grow and animals using dissolved calcium carbonate to create shells. Coal is formed from the remains of plants preserved in low oxygen conditions, for example swamps. Over time, all that remains is the carbon from the plants compressed into a rock. Oil shale is another biochemical rock. It's a typical fine-grained shell which contains kerogen, a mixture of organic chemical compounds. The shell is normally open pit mined, and then liquid hydrocarbons are extracted with heat and can be converted into crude oil or shale oil. Limestone is formed from calcium carbonate, often in clear shallow seas. It is typically a biochemical rock formed from the shells of shellfish and other protective structures and skeletons. These creatures use the calcium carbonate dissolved in the oceans to build these structures or to grow their bones. When the animal dies, the shell sinks to the sea floor and can be broken down via wave action, leading to small particles of calcium carbonate, which lithify into limestone. Finally, chemical sedimentary rocks. These are formed when a solution becomes saturated and the solute precipitates, without biological processes being the main action. Often, this precipitate is around a nucleus, for example, a paloid or a tiny clast. Oids are small, spherical formations made of layers of calcium carbonate. They form in high-energy seas. There has to be wave action for them to roll about the sea floor. This means they normally form in a shallow, tropical sea. As lots of them build up, they can lithify to form oolitic limestone. This is one example of a chemical limestone. As photosynthesizing bacteria produced oxygen, Abundant iron in the oceans reacted and formed iron oxide. Variations in sunlight caused by either seasons or global changes cause reductions in the volume of iron oxide produced, meaning shale builds up instead. This leads to the bands and its name, banded iron. There are other chemical sedimentary rocks, but the final one for this video is halite or rock salt. Halite has the same chemical formula as table salt, sodium chloride. It forms isometric crystals which are typically colourless. These form from dissolved sodium chloride, although do not often precipitate out due to oversaturation. Normally, evaporation forces the salt out in playa lakes and on the coast. This video has explained the classification of sedimentary rocks and the three different types, clastic, biochemical and chemical, with examples of each. Part 2 will look at the environments these rocks form in and explain the processes at play behind their formation. Click here to subscribe so you don't miss it.